All right, welcome back to Talk of the Town, and uh, I'm Jake Fuller with my co-host, who's uh, uh, gave us a very interesting scenario in the first hour about what's going on out in Newberry, and uh, I'm talking about the Warthog, Ward Scott, <laughs> and uh, you know, it's uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see if they'll if they can pull this this thing out of the fire, but uh, right now it just doesn't look like it went as planned, obviously, and and I really hold our public officials accountable because they're just so either inept or just inept or naive or stupid i don't know what it is you know or or arrogant uh thinking that no things will work out don't worry about it you know well things don't always work out well ultimately if you want to put the blame where public officials are involved you put it squarely at the feet of the county manager Mm -hmm. who's he's already gone he's already gone and listen audience you're going to get a chance now You're going to have a new county manager. We've been reviewing their applications. There's only a couple of questions to ask them. Is it relevant at all? Are you gung-ho or not about smart growth? Is that the only thing you can think of? Because that's what you're going to be asked to buy into when you come here, or you're going to get fired. Smart growth, no growth. Smart growth, no growth. If you come into this community and that's what you're going to help engineer, then we don't want you. Yeah. But that's not the way the questions are going to be po- uh, presented. Um, they're going to be, you know, the general same old stuff. And if you look at the way in which these names have been presented, they've been presented by the um, the team that goes out and, and pools together applicants where people, uh, you know, harbor their applications in case they might want to get to some other community. So... I tell you, I've been in on several hiring situations like this. You want to be very careful about turning. I'm talking now to the county commissioners who are going to make this decision. You need to visit the city, okay, or the community, the county, which this person who applied to be your county manager managed. And you need to go in there with a disguise, okay? Don't go in there saying, oh, well, I'm Captain Planet." From a Lachua County Commission, go in there disguised and start talking to the folks on the street. Oh, that never happens. And that will never no, happen. Because, because all they care about is what they that what they want is this county commission, the majority of the county commission, they want a strong environmentalist, somebody who's all on board with, with smart growth and, uh, and is not in, interested in fixing roads. Uh, I mean, are you going to perpetuate the same stuff we've been talking about here? It's made this county as an end destination unattractive for a community like Newberry that's trying to find a way to promote itself through some healthy, wholesome activity. Um, it's just not going to happen. So, when I'm serious now, that's the way you would be intelligent about picking a county manager. The way you're doing it now. Um, <laughs> You might as well talk to you might as well talk to Obama's cabinet about whether or not they would recommend Obama. Well, That's the no, type of objectivity objectivity you're going to get. Well, what they want is they want a yes man. Right? They want a yes man that's going to that's going to back in the it, In other words, they just want to hire a consultant basically to support everything that they that they uh, that they, you know, that they support that they believe in and which is this, the whole environmentalist uh you know do you, do you really want to see a stronger environmental protection department do you want to you know yeah, the whole thing i mean that's that's what we're going to get uh and and the two uh level-headed commissioners are not going to have any say so in the matter they're no gonna, they're not going to have any say so in the matter and and uh and so you know it's just going to have to be uh you know, it's not going to be very. It's not going to get. Not it's not going to be pretty. It's, it's not going to be pretty, and what you're going to get is is uh, not going to be. Well, what in my in my opinion is not going to be what the community really needs. And speaking of not pretty, last night they held. Here we go. They yeah. held a uh, Alachua County Democratic Executive Committee meeting, and of course we have people everywhere, even. Even spies in the Democratic Executive Committee uh, meetings who attend there and attend these meetings, and so we found out a lot of stuff. We found out that um, that the Democratic Executive Committee has tried to make it look like they were outraged 
that Craig Lowe got money and Sherwin Henry didn't, and uh, they were outraged. And uh, so it's really, they, sh- they don't want any kind of uh, uh, pushback from uh, black voters, black Democrat voters who have, you know, who have always uh, automatically pulled the lever for a D. And so, uh, and to, and to uh, back this up, of course, a letter was distributed last night to everyone there, and we have a copy of it. Uh, it was distributed by Yvonne Henson Rawls, the uh, county, uh, the uh, city commissioner for District 1 over in East Gainesville. Now, uh, they, they, there's no date on it as far as I can see, and they purport reported they were trying to tell everyone that this letter went out to the uh, state Democratic Party, the Florida Democratic Party, the day after the uh, election, I assume after the runoff, uh, you know, the the general election or, you know, the first election uh, when Lowe ended up in a runoff with Mayor-elect Braddy. Uh, And they said this was fired off. Uh, by the Florida Democrat uh, to the Florida Democratic Party from the Alachua County Executive Committee, uh, Democratic Executive Committee, and let me read it for you. To whom it may concern, we are writing to file a grievance in regard to two actions taken by the Florida Democratic Party. One, the FDP, Florida Democratic Party, donated to one Democratic candidate, Craig Lowe, over another, Sherwin Henry, in the 2013 Gainesville mayoral election, and two. The Florida Democratic Party did not consult the local party officials before taking action in the Gainesville mayoral election. These actions have damaged the Alachua County Democratic Executive Committee's relationship with local, the local African American community. We are requesting that the Florida Democratic, Democratic uh, Party Judicial Council investigate this matter to determine what occurred and to make recommendations to put procedures in place to ensure that it does not happen again. Thank you for your attention to these matters. Respectfully submitted by Robert Equality Prather, Chair, Evelyn Equality Fox, <laughs> Vice Chair, Gina Equality Mastro de Casa. Equality Diversity. <laughs> Equality Diversity State Committee Woman and Terry <laughs> Equality Diversity State Committee Man. Now they're trying to say that they fired this off the day after uh, the day after the first election when Sherwin Henry lost and Craig Lowe ended up in a runoff with, with Ed Brady. Um, so they're, what they're doing is they're trying to do damage control, trying to convince everyone that they didn't they didn't pick winners or losers. Now they don't mention in the letter that um, they may not have been consulted, but they knew about it. Craig Lowe didn't have to accept that money, uh, but if he accepted it, obviously the local Democratic Party knew about it. They, I, I just cannot believe that the state Democratic Party is going to do something without telling the chairman of the Dem- local Democratic Executive Committee. He could have said, no, 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 we don't want to do that. You don't want to do that, and this is the reason why. I mean, if, 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 if they didn't consult him, then they have a real communications problem. Now, Yvonne Henson Rawls, of course, she's desperate to, to look like uh, she's on the side of the African-American community, and we're really not, you know going after fellow black Democrats because she she is totally a, a total toad uh, toady for the Democratic Executive Committee and now she she's trying to play both sides she's trying to cover her butt is what she's doing and I just don't believe it but uh, when we get back I want to tell you uh, how the meeting went and it, it's pretty interesting stuff we'll be right back on talk of the town It takes the practice skill of a craftsman to make certain every kerosene carpet is created to the highest quality standards. And it takes craftsmen just as skilled to make sure your kerosene carpet is installed to the highest quality standards. At Carpet One Floor and Home, we have the total package, soft and scrumptious kerosene carpet, thick and luxurious kerosene padding, and kerosene certified installers. The very best in the business. No need to run around town. If it's not certified kerosene, it's not Carpet One. Don't settle for less. Come to Carpet One today. Jenny sits in class. She glances at the clock, 312. She fidgets with a piece of paper. She looks down at her shoe. She slouches a bit more. 
She glances at the clock again, 3.13. She wipes a small drop of sweat off her upper lip. She looks outside at the school buses lined up. She looks at the clock. She closes her eyes. She looks at the clock again. She rubs her hand. She wipes sweat from her lip. She scratches her ear. She looks at the clock. She stares at her desk. She keeps staring at her desk. And she prays that her mom gets home this afternoon before her stepdad does. Jenny is now in foster care. She wants to go home, but is afraid it might all happen again. Jenny has never felt so alone. Help an abused child like this. Volunteer to be a guardian ad litem and be their voice in court. For more information, call 374-3656 in Gainesville or 369-2525 in Ocala or go to guardianadlitem.org. Alarian Bank with six convenient locations in Gainesville, Alachua, and Ocala is the bank you can depend on. The experts at Alarian Bank specialize in SBAs, Small Business Administration Loans. So whether you need working capital, equipment financing, low down payments, or extended terms, Alarian Bank is your local dependable SBA. SBA lender. Visit AlarianBank.com and find out how Alarian Bank can help your business grow. Alarian Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Call Talk of the Town now, 352-372-3995. That's 352-372-3995. All right, we're back on Talk of the Town, and uh, last night, I guess they had they ran the meeting, apparently, from what we've heard. They ran it pretty much like Craig Lowe would run a city commission meeting, except that anyone who wanted to make a comment had one minute to speak, and that was it. And you were summarily cut off if you went over one minute. And uh, what happened was some of the uh, individuals that attended this meeting got up and made a few startling revelations uh one was that in 2000 the year in the year 2000 florida democratic party chairwoman allison taunt contributed to is it tant or taunt one of the two t-a-n-t contributed to republican bob casey's campaign she did not contribute to democrat rod smith's campaign uh and then uh Florida Democratic Party Chairman Rod Smith endorsed Republican mayoral candidate Paula Delaney when she was running for for uh, for mayor of, of the city of Gainesville. So they both supported Republican candidates over Democratic candidates. Now, I guess it's different if you're white and you support a Republican candidate. And Ron Smith was the head of the Democrat Party. Yeah, he was, at the time, he was the, he was the chairman of the Florida Democratic Party. He endorsed a Republican mayoral candidate. Of course, it was a nonpartisan race, but at the time, Paula Delaney had not totally lost her, her sanity, and she was a, a Republican at the time. Uh, so she just hadn't come to the realization that she was a uh, that she was a sellout so it had a, an epiphany yeah so anyway so what 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 it's telling me is is that contrary to what Yvonne Henson Rawls is trying to con people into thinking by distributing this letter i guess she felt it necessary to defend her actions and the actions of her cohorts um, it what it tells me is that people these african american Democrats who supported Ed Braddy are basically second class citizens. They're second class Democrats because what they did is uh, what they did has has basically resulted in in the very people that signed this letter, uh, Robert Equality Prather, Equality and Diversity, Yvonne. Diversity Fox, Gina Mastroticasa, and Terry Fleming, what, they're the exact same people that filed uh, a grievance against the Black Democratic Caucus and wants to have their charter revoked because those, some of the individuals in that Black Democratic Caucus actually dared to support Ed Braddy, who was not a Democrat, in a nonpartisan race, which Rod Smith did the exact same thing. And uh, so I guess it's just a you know, matter of uh, what skin color, I guess. Isn't that the case? Oh, that's all I can. All I can surmise is that people in East Gainesville, if you do not do as you're told 
and you do not vote and pull that lever for a D and you're and you're a black Democrat and you do that, you're you're finished. You're a second class Democrat. And that's uh, and, and they don't like this bad publicity. So, of course, Yvonne Henson Rawls, uh, who loves, loves to go around and poke people in the back all the time and assault people, um, she uh, tried to put out the flames by passing out this letter saying, see, we, we were really concerned about that, about Sherwin Henry not getting any money. We were concerned, but not concerned enough, uh, I guess, you know, to, to not file a grievance and support a grievance to pull the charter for the Black Democratic Caucus. So it was it was pretty interesting. I, I thought, uh, you know, the well, you know, people doing some good research there. They're finding out that um, you know it depends on who's bore at the cabbage. It's it's uh, everything is relative and situational to the political agenda they're trying to advance. So in this case, they have gotten themselves in a pickle because they have become, if you will, racist. Uh, and discrimination is all over the place here. Well, they're trying to prove that, see, they didn't approve of the Florida Democratic Party giving money to Craig Lowe. It wasn't their fault. Uh, well, so it's blacks discriminating against blacks. So don't That's be, what's interesting. So don't be, you don't be mad at us. We didn't do it. But you are trying to get them kicked out of the Democratic Party by having their charter removed, right? Yeah, and which, which points out my point is that, you know, let's just drop the... The race labels of us, we're all people. And this is... Yeah, but not in the Democratic Party. I guess not. No, because... You know, they're using the labels to really browbeat one another. Well, this is black-on-black accusations because uh, Yvonne Henson Rawls and and Evelyn Diversity Fox and uh, Cynthia Chestnut, you know, all of those, they are, you know, African-American, and uh, they're basically... Part of the status quo. They've, in my opinion, they've sold out. Uh, you know, the black voters in Demo- in uh, District One for the comfort and power of being inside the clique of the Democrat Executive Committee. So they're willing to be the black overseers and keep to try to keep everybody in line over in East Gainesville. That's what is, that's what's going on. And uh, it's interesting to see all of this playing out. But uh, the people that brought up this kind of. Uh, uh, the situation about Rod Smith supporting uh, then Republican mayoral candidate Paula Delaney, uh, we have it on on eyewitnesses on uh, their accounts that Paula Delaney was at the meeting last night, sitting right next to Craig Lowe, and they were both snickering when this was brought <laughs> up. They were snickering about it. Well, <laughs> oh, what, boy. you know, so oh, boy. of course Paula Delaney will snicker at anything, I guess. About uh, she's one of the nasty nineteen, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And I guess Craig Lowe is one of them now, so I guess it's the nasty twenty now. Yeah, so. it might be twenty. Nasty, yeah, nasty, nasty twenty. Tw- nasty twenty. Our call in line is three five two three seven two three nine nine five. Let us know what you think about this. Uh, uh, we've been told, uh, and other people have been told. Well, it's not. Any of your business, you're not a you're not a Democrat. It's none of your business. So what do you care? Well, mm. I just think it's interesting to see the cracks forming in the in the. Oh, they are our business. The crack, yeah, absolutely. Everyone is our business. They are our business. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I just think it's funny to see the cracks forming in this uh, the machine. You know, some of the bolts are starting to kind of come loose, and it's it's interesting. You know, it's interesting stuff, and that's what we talk about. Uh, let's take John on line one. Go ahead, John. Yeah, I was just wondering uh, if this uh, <laughs> could be a uh, a preliminary damage control drill. You know, after the DC. DEC bankrupts Gainesville with all their foolishness on everything from the biomass plant to the mass transit plans to the Dickey Hanneran Park on Depot Avenue. I just wonder, you know, if this could be a, a drill, you know, they're having now to do the damage control on the, for the, you know, the black people on East, in East Gainesville. Yeah, what they're trying to do is they're trying to say, look, don't don't blame us. It's the Florida Democratic Party, and so don't blame us, and and because they're trying to get them back on. Uh, in line, you know, to just do as you're told and vote Democrat and don't, you know, so they're trying to get them back online, trying to get them, trying to get them placated so they're not going to be so mad about local, the local <laughs> DEC. And, and it, I, don't, I don't think it's going to work because you know what's going to happen? They're going to yank their charter, the, the oh, yeah. Black Democratic Caucus. They're going to, they're just going to get, get yanked. And if it's not, it's going to be, uh, they're going to get dressed down one way or another. There are a lot of hard feelings out there. And, uh, it's just interesting to see it play out. So. I don't want to give you a sidetrack. Uh, you have any idea what that park they're doing on East Depot Avenue? What's the final dollar cost on that going to be? 
Uh, I'm not sure. We'll have to look into that. Uh, it should be in the hundreds of millions, isn't it? You're talking about Pegeen's Toxic Lake? Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Your Toxic right. Park? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll have to look into that. I, I never could understand why Gainesville just can't be happy with what it's got. they got Hidden Lake. they got Lake Meadow. they got Devil's Mill Hopper. they got the Prairie Spray with all those trails. It's all about got, monuments. It's all about a, a monument to Pegeen. Yeah, it's Glen a... Springs. All these natural wonders. I tell you, all that money is going to be money down the toilet. Because I tell you what, that's never going to be a Bush Gardens. It's never going to be a Sunken Gardens. It's never going to be like Crescent Lake Park is in St. Pete with the state's biggest banyan tree. No, they can pump all the money in that park they want, and it's going to look like man-made. It ain't going to be a natural beauty. They're just throwing money away. I'm wait till you. the wait till the homeless and the hungry take over that park. That might be good for that. Yeah. Yeah, but but you know it's all about monuments. Pegine wants a monument to herself that's visible, and unfortunately, <laughs> the monument that's going to get hung around her <laughs> the, the, the monument that's going to get hung around her neck and it's probably going to be a millstone is the yeah. biomass plant. It's going to be a millstone around Gainesville's neck. Yeah, absolutely. And the biomass and everything else. Absolutely. Okay, give up the good work. Guys. All right, thanks. Uh, let's take Elizabeth on line two. Go ahead. Elizabeth. Hi, guys. Um, I, I was at the meeting last night. Um, it's very hard to describe the, the atmosphere. Um, it, it felt like something out of a, a, a Kafka novel to me. It was just kind of surreal. Hmm. Um, and, Do you mean something like metamorphosis? Well, I was thinking, you know, the the, uh, the trial, you know, something <laughs> like that, you know, or, or or either one, really, I guess, because it, it certainly, you know, it, aren't you it, impressed by my knowledge of things? I, like that? I am. It, it it looked like something that may have turned into a giant cockroach. But <laughs> you any, have read your work. <laughs> 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 um, but uh, I I think there are certainly more authorities authoritative people you can talk to than me about this. I, I hope that, that Charles or Ehrman will come on. Um, maybe Ray Washington can come on and talk about some of the legal aspects of this. But I can just talk about a couple of things quickly. One is, you know, after the meeting, I tried to have a couple of conversations with some DEC people that I sort of know. And, um, and I've come to the conclusion that there's just no point in, in doing that anymore. Uh, they're are they just, not receptive or what? It, well, reason and, and logic are just not, not part of the equation. Uh, it's that, that's done. Uh, there's no point in that anymore. It's, you know, well, you can point out that, well, look, Rod Smith signed this letter. Allison Tent did that. And you're, the response you get is, oh, but that was 12 years ago. Oh, so that's 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 a long time ago. That, uh, so right. it's different when it happens a long time ago. Right, exactly. And so, so it's it's just very uh, you know kind of upside down world, which is what what made me think of of Kafka. You can't. <laughs> there's there's no there's just no point. It's the end of the line as far as reason and logic go. The second comment I want to make is you know I grew up in Alabama in the '60s. And uh, it, it was a very shameful period in, in my state's history. Um, and, and the Democrats were running the show then. Uh, they were the ones who were doing the bad things to African Americans. And over time, uh, my party's changed, and it's gotten much better on, on those issues. But what I saw last night, reminds me of the people who ran Alabama in the 60s. And that's a very emotional issue to me, uh, an issue of, of justice and fairness. And um, that's that's the bottom line for me. It's very disturbing. Yeah, well, it's unfortunate that they, um, you know, that they... Uh, by the way, that, you know, Jay, go ahead and finish that talk. Well, I was just going to say it's unfortunate that they... Uh, some of these people in the Democratic Party, um, they're touting themselves as, you know, um, for equality and all this kind of thing and civil rights and all that. But I guess when push comes to shove and somebody threatens your power, uh, that all goes out the window. That's, Elizabeth, that's why I don't uh, subscribe to conventional interpretations of who was bad and who was good uh, when everyone is writing an interpretation of history. Mm -hmm. um, it's not. It doesn't work that way. I don't think it does. You know, uh, it, it, it's it's human beings. It doesn't matter whether it's tall, short, um, black, white. It's the character of the human being. And 
Hey, if it were as simple as it's been made out to be, as these conventional interpretations of the past would have these modern people believe who weren't there and saw it, um, no, it doesn't work. Well, that way. It, you know, from an outside, it doesn't work that way. from an outside observer, it just looks like this local Democratic executive committee is telling the Black Democratic Caucus, "You got to go sit in the back of the Democratic bus." I mean, that's the way I'm seeing it. Um, now, I, I did want to ask you one thing, Elizabeth. As far as that book you referenced, um, does that come in a was it, was that a coloring book? If not, I, I don't know anything about it. So. <laughs> so. You know, Jay gets nervous when we get you know we get into conversations that uh, literature to me it, he doesn't have a clue what we're literature talking. to me means staying inside the lines and when you're you know with your crayon. So <laughs> there, is, there is no doubt in my mind that somebody somewhere has made coloring books out of Kafka. Okay, well I'll have to look it up then. All right, thanks. We appreciate it. Now we got to take a break here on Talk of the Town. We'll be right back. Need a special tool for an upcoming job? Don't buy it. Rent it from United Rental. Planning a wedding? Need tables, chairs, chafing dishes, and more? Don't buy them. Rent them from United Rental. United Rental really does have it all. Before you buy a piece of equipment or a tool, rent it from United Rental. With two convenient locations on Northwest 8th Avenue and on 53rd Avenue. Open six days a week, United Rental has it all. Ms. Pelge, I want to place an ad for a new employee. Now, here's all you have to do. Click here. Mm -hmm. Click here. Yep. Now pick the location. Now what? Uh, get ready for the phone to ring. Well, you are good. It's not me. It's Gainesville Ocala Help Wanted dot com. With their resume access option, it's easy to zero in on that perfect employee. Boy. By the way, what position are you looking to fill? Yours. Does that mean? Funny, they just found me a much better job than this one. Friday will be my last day. That's fair. Thank you, Gainesville Ocala Help Wanted dot com. Long name, amazing results. Just let me catch my breath. See, I feel like I've gone as far as I can here. Finding qualified employees is so hard. Uh, okay, Mrs. Flower, <laughs> Mrs. Flower, please don't grovel. I set you up on Gainesville Ocala Help Wanted .com. You can post as many jobs as you like for one low price. Oh, I want. And with the resume access option, it's easy to zero in on the perfect employee. You were the perfect employee. Okay, I'm walking out now, Mrs. Flower. Let go. Let go. Please let go. Gainesville Ocala Help Wanted .com. Long name, amazing results. Mark Levin. You and me going to subsidize health care for millions of children in families that already have health care insurance. What bothers me now is you and I are subsidizing families that earn $80,000 a year or $100,000 a year. So the poor schlub who earns $35,000 a year is being taxed to subsidize somebody who earns $100,000 a year. This is how the Marxists work. Mark Levin. Weeknights at 6 on the Star 99.5. Be a part of making it happen. Call Talk of the Town now, 352-372-3995. That's 352-372-3995. Come on. All right, during the break, uh, audience, I was helping Jake understand uh, who Kafka uh, was. I can't even pronounce he, it. You know, he... It's anyway, go ahead. Sometimes something I have to work with. Anyway, the Precious Metal Report is presented by Coin and Jewelry Gallery at 2007 Northwest 43rd Street in the Millhopper Shopping Center. Current market conditions for gold are $1,468.90 per ounce. Silver is selling for $24.03 per ounce, while platinum commands $1,515 per ounce. The Precious Metal Report is presented by Coin and Jewelry Gallery. You read that better than Kafka. So, yeah. uh, there you go. I didn't read it in German. Well, uh, so anyway, our, our call in line is 352-372-3995. Let us know if we're off the mark. Um, you know, so we more than invite some of these uh, callers who I'm sure they never listen, but they always hear it from someone else. <laughs> yeah. uh, but we, we would invite uh, Gina Mastro de Costa to call in or Robert equality prather <laughs> call in or evelyn fox we've never heard from her and um you know it's just interesting that they would it seems like they would want to defend themselves and and set the record straight like adrian in the first hour was talking about why don't they ever call in and set us straight and put us in our place well you know and i always are tickled by the people who I, I get emails from and you do too that say well i didn't hear the show but people tell me you said this, that, and this, and that. Oh, yes, we've even heard from... And I want to take issue with what this, that, and this, and that was. According to the people who listen to the show, I didn't hear the show, 
but I want to take issue with it. Yeah, and we hear this Please. from not just Democrats. We get emails and, and texts and everything else, uh, not just from Democrats, for, but from Republicans that we've criticized. Oh, and, yeah. uh, they're always trying to, to defend themselves. And uh, we just, it's an opinion show. This is our opinion. Uh, and we stand by our opinions. And uh, so... You know, we criticized one failed campaign, uh, one uh, of one uh, candidate here recently, and uh, we, we, uh, he wants to come on the show and defend himself. Well, you know what? Call in if you'd like, but I don't see it happening. Um, anyway, uh, because if you're a failed candidate, you're yesterday's torn panties. You are a failed candidate. Yeah. Let's talk to Armando on line one. Go ahead, Armando. Well, I don't really consider myself failed, but, you know, hey, whatever. Well, we weren't t- referring to well, you. you. stick we around about- us and we can make you one. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't want to join this club. No, but we, were, I- we were referring to somebody else, but anyway, go ahead. Oh, well, we, we didn't have you in mind. Oh, uh, well, I love y'all, too. <laughs> anyway, um, I want to talk about, I was at that meeting last night, and I want to I want to talk to you and put some things into perspective really quickly. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know, like I said before, how... Uh, the, the BEC chair, and I'm going to stop saying his name because I don't want to give him any more power, how he earns the name equality he, outside of anything because there was everything that was unequal. We asked we asked the BEC to rescind their, their letter and make an apology. Of course, it fell on deaf ears, which is what I fully expected. But you need to give them the opportunity. This was Maybe, last night? Which was last night. It yeah. was absolutely last night. And the other thing is, the thing about it is you have De- Evelyn Fox, you know, sitting up there, Claiming the name of Jesus and saying, "Oh, I only you know need Jesus or whatever she was doing," <laughs> but I don't, know, I, I don't understand. You're the biggest demon that there is, but you want to talk about Jesus. <laughs> um, the other thing about it is, is that we, as a community, absolutely have to put the facts in perspective. They said that we impaired and caused Craig Lowe to lose the election, the black community. So let's talk facts. The facts that were in that letter, Warden Jake do not support anything. The facts do not support what they put in that letter. The facts are that Craig Lowe won every historically predominantly black district in Gainesville. That's a fact. Those are the numbers. Numbers don't lie. Two plus two is four. It's never five. So that doesn't hold water. That's number one. And the second part about it is for them to blame an entire community for their bad behavior, they did these things. They were the one that sent out Dwayne Gildea to go on a voter intimidation and suppression parade. These are the same folks that have, you know, discriminated against Clovis Watson, who happened to be there yesterday. They put this this lady, Mary Helen Wheeler. Say anything? Did he say anything? Oh, he did. He did. He, he made some overtures talk about, you know, the Affordable Care Act and some other things he did. Uh, and Nothing about this issue, though. Um, he, he made some subtle overtures about the issue, about how we should all get along and come together and oh. we're Democrats, blah, blah, blah. Oh. But that said, I wanted to get back to some, uh, some other substantive things that did happen there, yeah. which, which were, which are important because we need to, the, the folks need to have a fact. You know, the DEC chair used to be the, as, he, as the Gainesville Sun reported, was the former president of the Stonewall Democrats. Well, that's what he did to the Black Caucus and members of the, of the people of color yesterday, he stonewalled us. He absolutely stonewalled us. We, we've been stonewalled to actually have any kind of conversation. And this is supposed to be the Democratic Party. How Democratic can you be by shutting people up and telling them to know their place and get back on the plantation? I mean, I know Gina Master Casa has numerous times tried to say that I was dishonorably discharged out of the uh, military, and she also calls her, she is the uh, associate vice president at UF. Someone needs to hold her accountable. We Hopefully we should hold her accountable because she's also a member of that leadership. She also put her name to the letter. She many times likes to say things and not having the facts and likes to, you know, well, uh, you know, Ar- 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 Armando, you're just ignorant. Need to be educated. Well, you know, well, I, I actually, I, I think I've been called many things. You know, you can call me fat, but definitely not uneducated. Well, that's but what I, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. You need to get back in your place, though, Armando. I, Does it, do, do, was, I off, was I huh? was I was I off the mark when I said that um, that it, it really the message they're sending is that uh, that black Democrats that uh, they're really second class Democrats. Well, it depends on what black. If they can control you and you hold the water to them, no, you're their you're their house Negro. Mm-hmm. Um, the rest of us are what we call field Negroes. So Evelyn Fox is dark as she and she's supposed to be out in the field, but she's in the house because she carries the water for them. 
Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I don't know. Evelyn Fox is the president of the NAACP also. Um, Evelyn Tyson Fox. So, you know, we need to continue to look at these folks. And I, and I guess there's a lot of other House Negroes out there because, I mean, they do things like, you know, support Craig Lowe and sign their names to letters that, you know, they, that he's done nothing for them. I don't understand this mentality. We cannot... We our community is clearly fractured and divided, but there's a lot of us that have woken up. They just want a piece of the pie. That's what they're. That's what it's all about. They they see them as the power that 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 is, and they want a piece of the the action. That's why they're. Well, that's why I, you they're know, I took, I believe in personal accountability and responsibility too, and I take responsibility for allowing it to happen. So that that you know it can and it cannot continue. And we need to keep talking about these things. And I appreciate you all giving us an avenue and that you all bring out these facts because we need to talk about it. But there is some video of it, and um, it was reported on TV20, Democrat versus Democrat. Oh, really? The, ext- yeah. the extended version is also on their website. But I'm going to get off now so that you all can have some other callers and some other folks talking about it. Okay, Thanks. well, we appreciate it. Well, I'll tell you what, it's... Um uh, I don't want to speak through for the Republican Party, but um, everything I've seen uh, with them, they they pretty much don't see color. You know, they don't have a black caucus. They don't have this or that. It's uh, it's really it really seems to be more inclusive. But um, well, I live long enough to remember that it was uh, President Eisenhower who uh, brought the troops in to integrate Little Rock High School, Republican. Um, you know, we were talking the other day about, you know, kind of where things went one way rather than the other. And I think it was with the assassination of of Kennedy because um, when Johnson came in, he, he didn't have a clue. And he wasn't popular. He wasn't well-liked. He'd simply been used by Kennedy to carry the South. And all of a sudden, I guess he wanted to have a legacy. And he went into this grandiose war on poverty. And all these social programs started with him. And... um You know, the Republicans had already done the tough work of integrating the society, and the Democrats were the ones trying to keep it from being integrated. So they just sort of picked up on the uh, coattails of the Republicans. And as Jesse Jackson himself said right here at Paramount Hotel at a dinner that I attended, had uh, when um, Martin Luther King was in the Birmingham jail, um, had Nixon come down to see him, Everybody black would have been a Republican to this day, but Nixon didn't come and Kennedy did. So everybody to this day, black has been a Democrat. And I couldn't believe it, but um, Jesse Jackson asked the audience to stop thinking in a herd mentality that they were getting used and abused. And this has been in 2004. From, from somebody who uses and abuses them. Yeah, this was in 2004, <laughs> for God's sakes. Yeah. Well... I almost fell out of my chair. I couldn't believe he was saying it. It never got publicized. Anybody out there who's listening, who was there that night, knows that's what was said. Uh, it was amazing. Well, I tell you what, I, 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 I don't want to, as an outsider, it's none of my, you know, none of my business. But it is interesting to to watch the dynamics going on, and uh, and the basically they they have paint, painted themselves into a corner. This DEC, and uh, if I was the Black Democratic Caucus, no matter what happens with their charter and everything else, I, I think I'd start an independent Black Caucus uh, because it really and and just invite everyone of any any political persuasion to join because I think it would be very interesting to see how powerful that group would be, would become. Uh, I think they'd have a lot more influence in uh, in local politics if they were an independent Black Caucus. Uh, I think they'd have even more credibility, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't be getting all this flack, you know? And then, um, of course, I still don't think Democratic candidates would show up if for one of their forums, but, you know, they're fairly petulant. petulant. But uh, anyway, I think we've got another caller. We've got one? or No, no caller. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and take our, bri- our break, and we'll be right back on Talk of the Town. Thinking of alternative investments? Now's the time to think about buying gold and silver, precious metals, as a hedge against inflation. With the dollar and the euro so unstable, investors worldwide have turned to precious metals. If you're ready to get started, stop in and see Ann or Vince at Coin and Jewelry Gallery, Millhopper. You can trade in your old gold for something new or toward bullion investments. Coin and Jewelry Gallery on Northwest 43rd Street next to Beef O'Brady's in the Millhopper Shopping Center. 
or call 378-3983 to get started today. Mother's Day is coming. Did you give your mom a hard time when you were growing up? Well, I know I did. I did a lot of pranks that seemed funny at the time, but it just made mom worry. Now, be like me. You can make it up to your mother this year by sending her Sherry's Berries. You get these giant, delicious, enormous, freshly dipped strawberries in white milk or dark chocolate from Sherry's Berries. Now, it's starting at only $19.99 in a beautiful gift box. That's over a 40% savings. All you need to do is go to berries, B-E-R-R-I-E-S dot com. Click on the radio microphone and type in my last name, Hannity. And by the way, you can double the berries for mom for just 10 bucks more. And you can do this for all the moms in your life, grandma, your mother-in-law, whoever. Now, I've sent these berries. I have to, as a matter of fact, send them to my wife each and every year because they're that good. There's only one way to get this amazing Mother's Day deal, 866-FRUIT-02, or just visit berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S dot com. Click on the microphone in the top right-hand corner. Put in my name, Hannity. This offer ends on Thursday. Do it because you love mom. Come on. Most kids resent a dad who's constantly pushing them. Let's go. But not Rick Hoyt. We can do this. For years, Rick has been pushed, pulled, and carried by his dad, and he loves it. Here they go. That's because Rick, a wheelchair quadriplegic since birth, and his father, Dick, together have competed in over 65 marathons. So when you see Dick Hoyt pushing his son around, you're witnessing extraordinary devotion. Pass it on from the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. If you would like to email Talk of the Town, the address is talk995 at gmail.com. That's talk995 at gmail.com. Hey, before we get started, go where the smart money goes to Florida Credit Union with convenient locations in Gainesville, Ocala, Lake City, and Stark. Florida Credit Union is insured by the NCUA. Uh, let's take uh, Debbie on line one. Welcome to the show. Hey, you guys. Great show. Thank you so much. I just wanted to say that I attended the meeting last night as well. And um, Armando was right. You know, we were stonewalled. They didn't allow any, uh, maybe three people were allowed to speak. And you only had one minute to speak. And then they ended the meeting. Hmm. Yeah, so, nah, that's, well, it, well, <laughs> you know. It, it just seems like they were running it the same way Craig Lowe. Uh, well, I guess he's still mayor for a couple more days the way Mayor Lowe has been running the meetings for the last three years at the city. They don't want to hear opinions, you know, and they were making um, basically, uh, you know, it was it was window dressing. They were just making a show that, yes, we're open to all opinions, but one minute? Yeah, were you there? Did you sense diversity and equality? Oh, yeah, I was, I think maybe I was the fourth one standing there to speak, and um they just ended it, and, you know, there we were, standing there with our mouths open. I couldn't believe it. It was shocking. Well, I mean, do, do you think I was off the mark when I said that it, it really does look like the uh, black Democrats that are that had dared to, you know, to step out of line, they, they're, they look like second-class Democrats. Oh, uh, yeah, and it appeared that um, Commissioner Henson Rawls was trying her best to do cover-up or whatever you want to call it. Pander. Covering her butt is what she was doing. Oh, it was so embarrassing. And, you know, and I hate to say this, but I just feel like the Democratic Party has been hijacked by Equality Gainesville. And well, that's been the case for a long, long time, Debbie. It's just now coming out. But uh, Yeah, when it, that been, man got up there in his sundress, or the girl or whatever, you know, she got to speak, he or she, I'm not sure of the um, LBGT, which is acronym, you know, belongs yeah, to yeah. him or her, but I knew right then, you know, it's over for the DEC. So a person of questionable, I mean, you know, uh, gender got up in, in, in a sundress and spoke, and then you were not allowed to speak <laughs> they ended the meeting <laughs> well you know to be honest i'm sure he or she is a member and you know i'm not a member of the dec yeah. so maybe that you know was the reason so you'll why. speak when you're spoken to right but you know all minorities deserve just and civil treatment but to hijack it hijack the democratic party for one group and to the peril of the rest it's just outrageous, and it's, it's well, really you know sad. what uh, you know what if they want to tie themselves to the crowd that brought us biomass and and wants to tie themselves to the crowd that is trying to force bus rapid transit and on they, us, they do go ahead, go ahead, I mean, do it at your own peril because if they want to go down with that ship, then fine, 
You know, that's the way I look at it because they because the people that brought us biomass, they're going down. I mean, uh, it's it's just a matter of time, and they know it. So uh, it's just selfishness that you know for their own political and personal agenda, they're willing to take down the rest of the people in this wonderful community. And it, it, it's just the saddest thing I've ever witnessed. Yeah. Well, you've got some real marginal characters on that uh, leadership uh, level, and. You know, sooner or later, the limitations become obvious. If you give them enough, you know, proverb, you give them enough rope to hang themselves. So I think they're right out there dangling right now. So, you know, <laughs> they, you know, they they may not uh, be able to get out of it politically. Uh, but it remains to be seen about the will and the perseverance of of those who felt the sting of their prejudice as to how they react, and that's going to be the final. As yeah. Jake, Jake says, you know, if they if if if, if Charles and his the group move over there to become independent thinkers, which they've been Wouldn't all along. That'd be wonderful. That'd be the best thing it could possibly do. But you know, I'm going to tell you now these po- these party affiliations. You know, we've been talking about the Stockholm effect. Yeah. And you know, it, you get abused enough to where you become codependent on the abuser, and you just can't break away because that's the only reality you know. And to be out on your own is too scary. And Ward, you can't rehab this bunch. You know, like it's like you said, it's a Stockholm syndrome. You're talking to your blue in the face. And Elizabeth said it earlier when she called in. You know, she tries to use logic, and that's not part of their equation. No, it's not. Most the people mostly are emotional. Um, very little thinking goes on. It's all feeling and and passion and. And it's not tempered by any. You it's know, protect the agenda you know, and the, the, the chosen few, yeah. that, you know, yeah. that are going to benefit from it. But no. I don't want to hog all your airtime. But thank you so much. Hog. Be uh, careful how you use oops. that word. <laughs> yeah. All right. We appreciate <laughs> it. We okay. appreciate it. We've got uh, we've got somebody on the other line who has felt the wrath of the DEC. We're talking to Barbara Sharp. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Hi, guys. What's going uh, on? I just wanted to let you know that I also attended that meeting last night, and I felt like I was at a zoo, and there were pit vipers sitting up on the bed. <laughs> and I tell you Jeez. what, I have never felt, I, I don't know, I, I, I was embarrassed to have ever been a longtime Democrat. It was absolutely outrageous. The The... The, the chair up there, Prather, he kept saying, I, it started, I think, at two minutes, and then he would speak part, half of that, and then he would say that the, uh, the other speakers would only have one minute, but it depended on who the speakers were. Mm-hmm. And because when Ray and Ehrman spoke, they were cut off before they were saying that, okay, your time is up. Uh, your time has expired before they could uh, uh, barely finish what they were saying, but they did an excellent job of of talking and and saying what we really want, the Black Caucus, uh, uh, you know, really want. And um, I just tell you, I just was embarrassed. They they acted, and and I'm I'm not a member of the DEC. Um, I was a member of the DEC until I lost the election in November. I suppose I might not, I, they might have not wanted me in. But there's one thing about it is I, I, you can count on me not to have the Stockholm principle when <laughs> I when I stay with the party because I'm not going to let them kick me out. But I'm not going to let them dictate to me what to do. Some of them after the. Uh, after the meeting was over, they were talking about Jesus, and I think some of them should have found Jesus long before they got on that committee. But anyway, I think we uh, we went there, and um, we it was said what we wanted it what we wanted to say, but the atmosphere was that uh, just like I said, pit vipers. Yeah. They, they don't. Some I've never seen. A group, except uh, you know, that would act like they did last night, as far as people speaking. I'll tell you what: when they start talking, when they start invoking the name of Jesus, <laughs> uh, the way they've acted, uh, it's all over. I know. They haven't it taken is. under God out of. Well, it's out like of it's day. like a, you know, on Happy Days. Remember that show, and when Fonzie jumped the shark. Uh, that's that saying that the one one episode he jumped the shark they knew the show was over right well i think if, uh evelyn fox has jumped the shark yeah and she was the one talking about jesus yeah yeah <laughs> yeah well, 
Uh, maybe she should ask forgiveness, so I don't know. Maybe she should ask him for help because we're not letting up. Yeah. Well, now, in two days, doesn't this come to a head with Jacksonville's uh, showdown? Well, a couple of dates, right? Yeah, Jacksonville has post, uh, they postponed the Judiciary uh, Committee, I guess he's the chair, postponed that meeting. Really? Yeah, that meeting for the uh, Saturday 11th has been postponed. Indefinitely, or is it given another date? It, it just was postponed for now. We, I, you know, oh. we don't know what will happen They're uh, just in the you'll... future, but we know that one for Saturday, we don't have to uh, they're, they're Well, hoping... uh, by postponing it, you know, that keeps, um, it's not a bad move on their part because it keeps you guys uh, in limbo. Right. Yeah, and yeah. they're hoping it'll all that you'll they're, calm down yeah, and, and go back hoping to your, that you just come to your senses. Yeah, yeah, come to your senses, go back to your place, and that's what they're hoping will happen. Right, but uh, I, I don't think. So. Yeah, I, I think those hopes will be. Good I think that, I think the more time they give it, the, the more the more time it's just going to make make uh, people in the Black Democratic Caucus even matter. Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. I hope it does because they they're being mistreated. So, right. right, and and eventually, hopefully, we will look at at. Uh, you know, forming another coalition, but uh, we've got to we've got to do this past this hurdle first. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. We appreciate your calling and thanks for listening. Okay. Uh, thank. You. All right. Let's take Charmaine on line two. Go ahead, Charmaine. Hi, Jake. How are you? Just fine. Good. You glad know, you Barbara left me. I'm glad you left me out of that. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry, Ward. How are hey, you? I Ward? bet you are. You got to. You know how to hurt a guy. Oh, Somebody sorry. called him Ed yesterday, so yeah. I, don't know. I mean, come on. All right, so what's on your mind? Well, you know, Barbara called it a, um, it, she said it reminded her of a zoo. It reminded me of when, do you remember the Planet of the Apes? Yeah. How the, how the apes would ha- go crazy, but whenever one of the um, the prisoners would get up, they would all rival. Yeah. That's where I felt I was yesterday. It was just a, a scene from the Planet of the Apes. Oh, oh that's they a shame. The, the folks on the dais were so rude. That was the most unprofessional meeting. No one had really, a, when, I, when our folks got up to speak, I timed it. It wasn't a minute. It was 56 seconds, and their time was up. I timed it. Both persons got up. It was 55 minutes, and their time was up. 55 seconds, you mean? Yeah. 55 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, they're just... And I asked them, I said, wait a minute, isn't isn't a minute still 60 seconds except for here? And, and they said, you'll speak when you're spoken oh, no, to. You can't say that down there. Yeah, they'll put you back in, the, in your yeah. place. And it's sad. A couple of weeks ago, Red Shepherd made, a, made the, de- the, the definition about um, what a slave is, mm-hmm. what a slave was. They had masters. They did not speak unless they were told they could. They didn't go to the bathroom unless they were told they could. This is what Evelyn Fox wants. Yeah. Her people better get her slaves better get back in line and they do not have uh, any sort of uh, mentality of their own. They have to be told what to do. Yeah. And just, and we stepped out of line. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry we stepped out of line, but she has to realize this. We are in, what, the 20th, 21st century. She's <laughs> living way back in the 18th century. And this is not how it's supposed to be. She needs to get back in line, and she needs to get back in her books, and she needs to understand that people are, this is a free country. The last I looked, everybody has a right to make a choice for themselves. Yeah. Well, that's not and the way they want it. It's all about I mean, power. So I yeah. was so shocked. It was like, okay. wait a minute, I'm not even at a professional meeting. Yeah. Am I at the right place? Let me leave. All right. Well, listen, hey, we, we got to run. It. Thanks, Charmaine. Yeah, we're out of time, and uh, we'll have another great show for you back here on Talk of the Town tomorrow. We hope you join us here on the Star 99.5.